Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. On my way to help a family outside of Dayton, Ohio, leaving Cincinnati, got about a 30 minute drive somebody wanted me to listen to some radio broadcast but instead of doing that I decided to check my tweets and get the phone number from O'Reilly's Auto Parts they wanted me to give them a call to their customer satisfaction line <laughs> to talk about my I guess unfortunate uh I don't know, experience at their auto parts store regarding the tool that broke, which I did purchase less than 60 days ago. Not sure why they wanted me to call because they told me the same exact thing. Find my receipt so that they can help me. They cannot help me <laughs> without a receipt. I told them that I purchased uh, tools and equipment from other companies and don't have that issue but they uh, stood firm on their decision to demand a receipt so at least they're consistent <laughs> good luck with that uh, have a great day O'Reilly's Auto Parts north on highway 75 towards Dayton just past this Trader's World thing and on my right I see this humongous statue of Jesus at this church and there's a little pond in front of it. I think the thing is actually a little scary. First time I seen it I caught myself actually speeding up trying to get away from it. They have some stuff on the internet about it this is actually a replacement model of a statue that they used to call Big Butter Jesus. So you can go on YouTube and search Big Butter Jesus. They got videos and everything about that thing, music videos. My friend Robert up here outside of Dayton, Ohio is now down to two Volvos. He has this silver 98S70 and his daughter has, I believe, a 95 850 wagon. And he wanted me to take a look at this one for him. He's out of town and tell him what it needs. Looks like it needs a, a driver's side headlight reflector, which I do not have with me. It also has a minor oil leak that's dripping in the driveway. Looking at it from the bottom, I thought it was dripping out of the top of the oil cap since the oil cap is an aftermarket cap that does not go tight but the PVC has been done so it has more vacuum than pressure on there and the top of the head looks relatively dry it's not puddled up with oil causing it to run down the motor so I'm getting ready to pull the cam sensor to see if there's oil coming out of it because I do see that the lower camp sensor bolt down there seems to be a little wet. So let's pull that off and see if that's leaking. It's real easy replacing the rear uh, camp sensors on these vehicles. It's either the intake or the exhaust that's leaking, rarely both. But if both are leaking, you do need to replace both. To get the intake cam seal replaced, you pull the distributor cap off. I usually leave all the wires connected. You pull off the rotor, you pull off the disc, disc in there and that dust cap, then you can have access to the seal. If you're removing the, replacing the exhaust one, all you have to do is remove your uh, cam sensor and pull off a rotator in there, then you'll have access to the seal there. I usually use a sheet rock screw or some kind of screw to screw in the outside of the seal not scratching the uh, cam or the head pull the seal out and press the new one in somehow there is some oil coming out of there 
I removed those two bolts, which fortunate for me, were just snugged in there. I believe I bought and brought with me a cam seal for these aft uh, locations. So I'm going to double check my little stash here. And if I do have a cam seal in there, I'll pull this one out and replace it. Aha! I did find a couple of these seals in my car. I know I put at least two of them in there. So I'll go ahead and replace this cam seal. Next, I'm going to put a 10 millimeter wrench on there and knock that uh, loose, that bolt loose, pull it out with that little uh, half moon thing, piece of metal there, so I can access the cam seal. You may want to remove the timing belt cover just to make sure when you knock that bolt loose, you don't uh, jump a tooth on your timing just to make sure you don't move that. Uh, but it shouldn't be in that tight. You should be able to break it loose without affecting your timing. The bolt came loose relatively easy. So you just turn it out. It's a 10 millimeter. has a washer and this spacer thing on there. Now you're looking at the cam seal there that you may be able to tell is leaking. And it is not coming out, so the seal's just probably old and needs to be replaced. Since that seal is not falling out and easy to get out, if you don't have a seal remover that's made for that, what I normally do is take one of these sheetrock screws I tap it onto the edge of the seal to puncture a hole in it. I screw it in a thread or two, and then I pull the seal out with the screw with a pair of pliers or, or uh, something that'll help me pull that seal out of there. I now have the screw into the seal, and I'm going to get some pliers or something and pull it out. Whatever method you decide to use... Try to make sure that you don't scratch your cam or your head getting that out of there because you don't want to create an area that's going to leak after you get done putting in your new seal. Now I'm ready to pull that out. So I put needle nose pliers or something on there and pull that seal out like that. Now I'm ready to size up and put the replacement one in. This looks like an OEM Volvo seal here. That shows you how far that screw was in that seal. I did a bunch of research and on Matthew's site, one of the reputable users that does good research claims that these SKF seals are as close to OEM as you can find. They're supposed to be good seals. So I lubricated the seal, put oil on it, now I'm putting it in place. Be careful you don't pinch it while you're putting it in and put it in just past flush. Some people use a large socket or something to work those in. Uh, I'll let you know what I end up doing. All right, I have the seal seated in. I use the butt of a ratchet extension to get it there. Pretty much even all the way around, just barely recessed from the surface. Next, I'm going to put this back in, oriented like it was. It's got those notches on it. It probably only goes on one way. Set that in place. Then, put your 10 millimeter bolt and washer in there. I would probably torque that down to maybe 9 foot-pounds at the most. Uh, not it doesn't have to be very tight at all. You could snug it down if you want. Set the sensor back in place. If there's any oil in it, clean it out and put it so that you can get those screws back in there. Then put your two screws in there. I, if you gotta, I would just snug them down. If you gotta torque them, maybe five to eight foot pounds. I'm going to talk about oil leaks on your Volvo P80 cars your 850s, your S&V70s from 93 probably up to 2000, but this oil leak video probably pertains to just about any car. 
unless the vehicle has been dramatically overheated let's go right ahead and rule out that there's any weird crazy extreme things wrong with the car like a crack in the block or something like that most of the time if a vehicle's leaking oil it's leaking out of a seal so let me go ahead and show you the location of these seals and how you can determine which one's leaking first of all you look under the vehicle and determine where your drops of oil are coming from if they're coming from the driver's side or the passenger side or if it's leaking down onto the oil pan and dripping on the ground from there best by getting on a set of ramps putting a vehicle on there crawling under there seeing where your oil is wiping washing it down and then taking a second closer look at what possibly could be leaking also along with locating the leak you want to try to figure out what has caused the leak and the most common cause of oil leaks on these cars besides the fact that they're gosh 20 years old and have 200 plus thousand miles on them is the fact that it has a PCV system positive crankcase ventilation system that often gets clogged up and when it gets clogged up it lets the engine build pressure inside of it when that happens it normally forces oil or oil vapors out of a seal and if you have a turbocharged car that adds another level of complexity to it now if you do have an oil leak and it's coming out of one of the seals there's a 25 percent chance that you could service the pcv system if it's clogged and actually cause that leak to stop because there's no longer excessive constant pressure building up in the motor and it's no longer trying to force oil out of those seals however if a seal has been pushed out of its seating position that's not going to help you so what you want to do is check your pcv system see if it's serviceable there's a video link below uh, what i usually do is put a glove on top of the uh, oil filler cap start the engine see if the glove inflates the next common cause of these cars having oil leaks is the oil cap either being improper or having a bad seal here you have an oil cap that is totally locked down on the engine but it moves around because it's an aftermarket improper oil cap so oil may be blowing by this especially if it has a bad pcv another thing you want to check with your oil cap is to make sure that the seal is platable not old hard cracked allowing oil vapors to escape them i've seen a car or i've actually purchased a car that they thought the quote unquote valve cover was leaking because oil was getting out of the oil cap leaking along the edge of the engine running along the side of the engine and down the back of the engine causing a oil leak where they were leaking almost a quart of oil every hundred miles so check your oil cap another possible source of an oil leak that's a little bit rare is your uh, flame trap box or pcv oil trap box which is located under your intake manifold under that manifold there's a brown plastic box that this tube goes to it's a black plastic box rather and oil does go into that box if the lower seal is bad it could leak oil out of that seal down onto your oil pan and blow oil out the back of your car i talked to a guy he was losing a quart of oil every i, I don't remember if it was 75 miles or 250 miles because that leak was was pretty bad so we found that seal replaced it and stopped his oil leak these cars as well as other cars uh, especially ones that have the overhead cams like this one it has dual overhead cams an intake and an exhaust cam it doesn't have rocker arms and stuff inside the engine so there's a seal on the intake cam there's a seal on the exhaust cam since there are items located on the back of the engine your distributor and your cam sensor 
you also have seals on the back side of there. If there's a reason for those seals to leak, like a bad PCV system, or those seals just get old, hard, and quit creating the seal, those will leak, causing oil to run down the motor and get blown around while the car is driving. So you can remove your timing belt cover, look very close inside the cover for any evidence of leakage. This one does not. You can look on the back side of the engine, put your finger under the distributor cap, see if you can feel oil there, or look on the very bottom bolt on that cam sensor, see if there's evidence of leakage there, which on this car it was. I just replaced that seal. That will cause you to have oil leaks out of your cam seals. The rear cam seals are somewhat easy to replace. The front cam seals are harder to replace because you actually have to take the timing belt loose to replace those seals. Another shaft or item that travels through the engine is your crank. You have your harmonic balancer down there. Your crank goes out of the engine to run the timing belt. That seal can leak or the one on the back side of the engine that drives the flywheel, which is basically your rear main seal. It's the seal between your engine surface and the shaft that travels out to your transmission. If the rear main seal leaks, you have to pull the engine or lower the transmission to get to it. $24 seal, $900 worth of labor. If you're front, uh, crank seal leaks, you have to pull the timing belt and all the parts off the, the front to get that harmonic balancer off, get that sprocket off of there, replace that seal. So that's probably a four or $500 seal. So at any rate, you don't want to have to replace one of those seals. Try to do things to avoid uh, those seals getting pushed out of there by excessive engine pressure with a clogged PCV or... EGR system or something like that. Cars that are not overhead cam driven like this uh, normally have what's called a valve cover. Those seals get old after 10, 12, 15 years and a lot of times they will leak oil out of your valve cover. Volvos do not have valve covers. They have cam covers with 40 plus bolts holding it down. They almost never ever leak. So on other vehicles, you do have valve cover leaks. You need to pull the valve covers, which are generally easy to do. Normally, an hour worth of labor in a $30 or $40 seal kit. Along with that, you have uh, spark plug well seals that go between the head and the valve cover to stop oil from getting on top of your spark plugs. Again, Volvo's cam cover almost never leaks there, but other vehicles have their valve cover leak there. So normally your valve cover seal will come with spark plug well seals to stop that from leaking. Another first for me, these brake pins for the rear of this vehicle were not set in all the way. They were hanging out about a quarter of an inch. And the little spread in the... Uh, in retainer was actually open a little bit and it's extremely hard to get these things seated in here so i'd never seen that before but i'm getting it right so uh, they were having some brakes squealing and asked me to glance at the brakes and that's what i found i was able to siphon about eight ounces of fluid out of that reservoir so that's how much i'm gonna add back be careful you don't add too much back into the system. You'll have to siphon more out. The service light was lit, so I used my reset tool to reset it. Now I'm going to test drive the car and make sure that the cam seal doesn't leak. Took the car on a short test drive. Inside the area is still dry. I need to wipe out the outside of the area. But it looks like that cam seal did good and is going to hold well. That's all for this silver one. Let's head back to the house. Vehicle has a check engine light and an ABS light. 
and it gave me a P0455, so it's got some kind of a vacuum leak somewhere. There it is. Probably J hose or something like that. I'll check under the hood real quick. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.